guys, it's Alyssa and this is Always Cinema Chic and I am so happy to be back and to be reviewing First Man, uh, which is directed by Damien Chazelle and stars Ryan Gosling and Claire Foy. And I know I've been gone for a really long time uh, and I will explain that at the end of the video, but for those people who just want to see the review, I thought I would just start there. So uh, I am not the kind of person who is usually into biopics. The performances can be great, but I find, I find that the stories are just really formulaic and I can plot out everything that's going to happen and there are really no surprises to me and so I almost cringe when I hear the word biopic. So, uh, you know, I didn't really have that concern with First Man because Ryan Gosling and Damien Chazelle were involved, so I didn't think they were going to do your typical biopic about Neil Armstrong and us getting to the moon. But uh, they certainly didn't, you know, and they didn't disappoint in any way, shape, or form. This is so much more of a psychological character study than it is so much about how we scientifically how we scientifically got to the moon. It wasn't really about each step of the way, although it does address all of those important historical points, that's definitely not the focus of the movie. The focus of the movie is uh, Neil Armstrong, his loneliness, his melancholy, what happened to him before he was even associated or working with NASA, and how that kind of creates a man who has this sort of gap between himself and his family. So it's a movie that's very much about family and very much about the cost of being successful and achieving something great because when you achieve something that is truly, truly great, then there's something else in your life that was kind of missing out for you to get there and it looks at the cost of that kind of uh, greatness. And, and there's one other thing which I think most people know about but I won't say here in case you don't know that sort of contributes to that state of loneliness that Neil Armstrong had and it just it feels like it pervades the entire movie and it is just so sad and that was the overwhelming feeling that I got from this movie was just depression and sadness and I don't mean that in a bad way at all it just it felt very very heavy and it was emotional the whole way through but it was also very beautiful and it was shot in these just extreme close-ups with this very shaky camera the whole way through and uh, you know it was very different it wasn't shot in a way that I was really expecting it and that is certainly a testament to Damien Chazelle who I think really looked at this movie from a different point of view and I was very impressed with it so along with the kind of close-ups and the shaky cameras we get such a realistic sense of what it would feel like to be in space I don't think I've ever seen a movie that felt so realistic about going into space and was so claustrophobic and felt so dangerous. You know, we know the historical events, we know, you know, I knew what was going to happen, but I still felt like I was gripping my hands and I was white knuckled and I was so, I was just so nervous and tense throughout this entire movie when there really isn't a need to be because you know what's going to happen, but the, the, the feeling of claustrophobia and the feeling of like the rocket ship feeling as if it was going to break as you're in it, uh, it was very different and everything felt critical. Uh, so I was so impressed with the way that he handled the film. Uh, and then even those shots where every once in a while you actually don't get a close up uh, and you get a steady cam so you know that those moments are just really really important and you know Ryan Gosling's performance and this is just an FYI everybody I think knows that Ryan Gosling and Tom Hardy to a, another extent uh, is my favorite actor that's working right now so sometimes it's hard to review someone when you just love their work so so much even when the movie isn't necessarily a good movie and yes he has had a few duds I'm very well aware of that but uh, I've never quite seen him act like this before his degree of subtlety was was different from other things that I've seen like I know that he can be very quiet and be a man of few words and kind of but there's usually this sort of anger that's bubbling beneath the surface uh, so I'm thinking of a movie like Drive or even a Blade Runner 2049 that there's this sense of anger beneath the character but that's not the case here there's a lot more logic and loneliness and just this 
pervading melancholy that this character is experiencing and that is very true to the real life Neil Armstrong uh, when I read a whole bunch of articles about him before and after kind of getting ready for the movie so he did he, he does a spectacular job of being just so subtle and inward and his he is one of the best working actors in terms of his facial expressions you can just figure out everything that he's thinking uh, from his facial expressions and I saw him in a way in this movie that I've never seen him before and while there's no you know there are a couple scenes where we see that emotion kind of boil over a little bit there's no gigantic scene where there's like yelling or screaming or anything like that so I hope that the Academy realizes how beautifully subtle this performance is and how really true to life it is so I you know he went on record as saying this was his most difficult role that he's ever played and you know you can see the amount of work that he put into this character and the amount the amount of research he put into this character and you know Claire Foy is equally spectacular as uh, Janet Armstrong in the film and she really is the counterpoint to Neil because where you know Neil has this kind of coldness and this detachment Claire Foy's character Janet just feels like fire and earth and everything that's here and real and right now and that's another thing I noticed in the film there's a lot of blue imagery that's associated with Neil Armstrong and a lot of that kind of yellow orange fiery imagery that's associated with Janet so that's just another thing that I noticed but she is great at being that counterpoint and at times quite scary of a character as well but she's such a strong woman and I was so pleasantly surprised that the movie dedicated so much time to his family life. I wasn't quite sure that they were going to do that and it just it balanced the film out so well and her character is you know well developed throughout so her performance is really great and then one last thing that I loved about the movie which I should have known but I wasn't really thinking about it going into the film was that the score is just unreal. So the score is by Justin Horowitz who also did the score for La La Land and there is no disappointment here. What could have just been like this sort of epic over the top grand space exploration movie that has that very typical soundtrack. It wasn't like that at all. It felt sort of otherworldly and sad but also beautiful and kind of hypnotic and I looked up and uh, Hurwitz did a lot of research on instruments that were popular in the 1960s that we don't really use today and so he used he uses all of those instruments in this film score and there are certain songs I think there, there are about three songs on the soundtrack that are just unforgettable and I really hope that he gets noticed for uh, what he put together for the Academy and I really think that Damien Chazelle deserves a nomination as well. The film deserves a nomination. It's it's so incredibly well made and well crafted and not necessarily what you would expect for your traditional biopic. So I'm so happy I saw it in the theater. It's something you need to see in the theater. And uh, now for the grade. So in terms of film and artistry, I would give First Man an A. It is incredibly well made. There might be, you know, a couple of scenes that maybe could have been edited down a little bit which is why to me this is a nearly perfect movie but not exactly perfect but uh, once again it's definitely something you need to see in the theater and hear that sound and feel that sense of claustrophobia and just experience what it was like because once again it's the closest thing that at least I'm going to come to to understanding what it would be like to actually travel to the moon so I'm so happy I saw it in the theater and in terms of watchability, I would give First Man an A minus. So it's it's an excellent film, but there are these very necessary moments of coldness and detachment that sort of may not make it quite as enjoyable, even though it's an incredibly well made film, well made film, um, as as some of the other movies that Chazelle has done. So like nothing is ever going to compare to La La Land for me. I just I know that for a fact, but. Um, it, it's still, it's the kind of movie I will watch every few years as opposed to watching it every single year. So it's still excellent, although maybe not quite as enjoyable, which is, you know, a little bit different than quality film uh, as some of his other movies. But um, I'm overall 
sort of surprised why people aren't going to the movie theater to see this film. It so deserves to see, be seen in the movies. And if you've seen it, I would love to hear what you guys actually thought about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and leave a comment below if you have seen the film or if you just want to see the film. Uh, so now I'll tell you the story as to why I was gone for a while. So just really briefly, uh, someone incredibly close to me and my family was and is still uh, incredibly ill, although he's getting much better. So we were kind of in and out of the hospital and so that combined with having to take care of the household and you know, basically be taking care of everything. I had a full time job at home and then going to work full time. It made it pretty much impossible to be able to go to the movies and when I was able to actually see a movie I didn't really have the time to make a video and edit it and really think about it and dissect the film so uh, things are actually looking a lot better so I'm very optimistic of making uh, more videos it may not be as consistent as it used to be but uh, I think we are over the hill and I see I see good things happening in the future so thank you so much for those people who actually reached out and you know were kind of checking in and were concerned because i hadn't put out a video for a while i really appreciate that a few people actually reached out and was wondering so that's that's exactly what was going on so uh with that said remember it is always in fashion to go out get dressed up and make it a cinema chic night bye everyone